The information discussed in this PillCast episode are merely opinions and do not constitute formal policy or legal guidance of any kind. Hello and welcome to another PillCast, the video blog where we talk about important federal procurement innovations in 10 minutes or less. We guarantee it. I'm Scott Simpson with the DHS Procurement Innovation Lab, and today I'm joined by a very special guest. Hey, Scott. I'm honored to be here. Uh, I'm Peter Jamboni. I'm a contracting officer with U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP. Um, also a CBP, the CBP Acquisition Innovation Advocate. A lot of the pill techniques we talk about here on PillCast and throughout the pill are ones that you can use in any part of the FAR with no special deviations or exceptions required. But there are a few authorities out there that are outside of the parameters of the FAR that allow for even more flexibility. Today, we are going to talk about one of those. It's called the Commercial Solutions Opening Program, which a lot of people just call CSOP or CSOP. This is a non-FAR-based authority that allows for extreme flexibility to streamline your procurement of a commercial item that's going to be used in an innovative way and for which the award is under $25 million as of 2023. Now, Pete, you and Josh Rodrigo We're the first people in DHS to award a CSOP authority, so you must have a lot of experience there. Tell us about one of your uh, requirements. Yeah, I appreciate the shout out, Scott. We're we're in the history books for that one. But uh, so this project was targeting solutions uh, that had what's called linear ground detection capabilities. Uh, We refer to that as LGDES. Um, And so the problem here was that our Border Patrol agents, they needed a sensor solution, um, ideally, that utilized supervised machine learning uh, to, te- to detect uh, movement along the border quickly and accurately. Um, but not only the, the detection was a, an important part, um, it's the identification is just as critical. So, you know, we wanted to make sure that the solution could detect movement or vibration and could identify if there's a movement as a human, a vehicle, an animal, or even a digging motion. Um, so, for example, when when there's a detection, the agency, the agents are not just chasing coyotes at the the border or you know some animal. You know, we want to make sure we have the proper identification for any de- detection, so that our agents can get there efficiently, quickly, and safely. Sounds like a really important mission, Pete. <laughs> what was your acquisition strategy to procure this using the CSOP authority? So because we were interested in all types of vendors, uh, both traditional and non-traditional and open to innovative commercial solutions, you know, that's why we decided that CSOP was the fit. Um, and we indicated that this would be a two phase approach um, in the solicitation. And, and in, the, in the first phase, uh, we accepted 15 page written solution briefs um, and they were just high level general information um, on the solution being submitted. Nothing, nothing that that you've probably seen your typical FAR procurement. So you had phase one and you had your written 15 page, but you also had another optional factor within phase one that the CSOP authority gave you some wiggle room to kind of create on your own. Tell us about that optional factor that's still within phase one. In the optional portion, and it's all coming down to the language in the solicitation, uh, we said that the government may choose to ask for additional written information, or we may ask the, the vendor to do an oral presentation or a technical demonstration. For this situation, the tech, technical demonstration was a good fit, um, and using that keyword may gave us that flexibility to have that option. So after re- receiving 24 solution briefs, um, our peer review team, which is equivalent in a far world as your evaluation team, we decided to invite eight of the most impressive vendors to a tech demo. Um, and we conducted the technical demonstration with all eight vendors lined up side by side at the Southern border wall. And it was a two week demo. First week was for setup um, and dry runs. And then the second week was the true official testing. Uh, we, we clearly explained that the vendors were not being compared and the performance was purely evaluating their own individual merit. And that's a big difference here. And, and the testing, just for your awareness, you know, that, that was on a 20-mile radius in Santa Teresa, New Mexico. And now it was after this where you did your formal down select. This was all still in phase one. 
Tell us about your down select and what happened after that. Yeah, so so after the technical demonstration, you know, we the peer review team and us, we, we identified one solution that we would move forward with. So we advanced them to phase two, and that's a full proposal submission. And essentially here, we're just in a negotiation phase with the vendor. Uh, long story short, this, this eventually resulted in a $10 million award. Um, at that time, $10 million was the cap for CSOP. We're happy to see that it, it got increased to $25 million. Um, And additionally, there were also four other vendors that we were really interested in that we evaluated very highly. Um, just at that time, we we really only had the funding for one, one vendor, um, you know, and we were just really at the time interested in their solution. Uh, but we put some flexible language in their non-selection notice where we said the government may elect to make an award to them through this CSOP solicitation within 12 months of this notice. And I really love that because it gave us the flexibility in the, in the near future if we would like to procure the solutions. We don't need to go through the whole solicitation process over again. We have them. Um, and, you know, it just comforted and softened the blow also to the unsuccessful submitters. I mean, I, I, they appreciated that very much. Take a look. See if your uh, agency is one of the ones that has the CSOP authority. Right now it's with DHS, uh, GSA, and DOD. But there's other ways to get access to it. And other similar authorities out there as well, like OTs and prize challenges and things like that. What were some of the things about the authority that stood out to you um, that as especially unique versus like doing a regular kind of FAR procurement, Pete? Um, I mean, there's multiple aspects. On the internal side, just the documentation, uh, you know, very limited documentation were really required, no acquisition plan. Um, but the most important thing is, I mentioned it earlier, was, you know, we're not competing, uh, we're not having the vendors competing against each other. Everyone was evaluated on their own merit. Um, and then also the flexibility and the creativity that as the CEO and uh, on the government that we have, uh, you know, we're really flexible with the language that we're allowed to put in into the solicitations, the way that we communicate with the vendors, the way we evaluate the vendors, and then the way we create our contracts. I mean, a lot of that is not allowable uh, under the FAR. And, you know, this gives the opportunity to a lot of non-traditional vendors to be able to, you know, propose to these CSOP solicitations. Yeah, it's especially great for attracting non-traditionals, uh, new, new entrants, uh, especially techie kind of firms, really great authority, lots of flexibility. And like you said, it's merit-based. And so if you had found that... Uh, one of the solutions worked really great on the southern border and another solution worked really great on the northern border or on a, a maritime border or something like that. You could have awarded multiples and that would have been OK. Some people are probably wondering what kind of clauses you put in. So do you use the main FAR clauses for this, like 52.217-8 and dash 9? Or do you write your own? What's the what's the logic and clauses there? Yeah, so the, the DHS CSOP uh, guide Highly recommends. I, you know, I, I at first thought it was required, but I highly recommends um, to to put in about four FAR clauses, uh, pretty basic clauses, clauses, and then we also included uh, a couple of you know the DHS security clauses um, that we felt were applicable to this situation. Uh, but for the most part, the, the, these were all you know language that we wrote up on our own that we worked with the vendors, especially in that phase two situation. Um, we worked with them to see what works for them, what what's in our best interest. Um, like warranties is, a, is an example. We're not using the standard warranty language. Um, and it gave us just to put language in there that is going to accomplish our mission best and also help the vendors out. So, uh, you know, it, it gave us that flexibility and it really worked out in the end for us. I, lo I love that idea of negotiating the clauses right with your awarding vendors. You might have different clauses with one vendor and different clauses with another based on what their concerns are, where they're being applied and everything else. That's going to do it for this PillCast on CSOP. I hope you consider using it. If you have a commercial solution that's going to be used in an innovative way, that's $25 million or under. If you've got any questions about it, you can always reach out. Thanks for joining us today, Pete. For all of you watching out there, if you like this discussion, drop some comments below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification button so you get all of our updates. Thanks, and see you next time.